Hey everybody, welcome back. This is Object 7 for Part 4 of Module 1. We've got a couple problems that are going to be dealing with objects, and namely these objects have arrays as values. So inside of the object we can say that this array is nested. Some people might argue that this is not a nested array, that for, in order for it to be a nested array, uh, one of the elements of an array has to be an array itself. Um, I don't buy that. I like the idea of a nest just being sticking one data structure inside of another. Um, so for an object, this has a nested array in it, but, but either way. A um, couple of notes here. If the array is empty, it should return an empty array. If the array contains no elements that are equal to 10, it should return an empty array. If the property of the given key is not an array, it should return an empty array. And if there is no property at the key, it should return an empty array. Now, there's a lot of different ways to think about this, but one of the ways that you are going to want to start thinking about it is developing a mental model of the order that we want to check these notes in. And the, the model that I usually tell students in mentored prep is, let's say that you're a pizza delivery person and the idea is that you're going to do something to maybe like give a bunch of pizzas to a bunch of people in an apartment building at an address. And so, you know, you're driving over there and there's one version where you plug the address into your GPS and there is no valid address there. You type it in and it's like, can't find that address. So I would proffer that that's the same as having no property at the key. Because they told us to do something at a specific address. If that address doesn't exist, that's probably the first thing that we want to check. So we'll put that as pseudocode for the first element. Not the first element, but for the first edge case. Then let's say that you get to the address because it does exist. And then you look at what should be an apartment building and it's a, it's a park. There's nobody lives there, so you can't really deliver pizza. So the idea for that would be that theoretically lines up with if the property at the given key is an array. So we assume at this point that the property does exist. It is at the location that we're supposed to be looking for, meaning in the case of the problem, there is something at object at key. In our metaphor, there is an address and the GPS takes you there. But when you get there, you realize it's not an apartment building, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a park. And so it's like, hey, I, that, that's not the kind of place that I was supposed to be showing up at. And uh, the rest of them, I guess you could follow up with, with you know, pizza-like metaphors. Maybe, maybe there's, you know, the floor that you're supposed to go to doesn't exist, or uh, there is nobody there who ordered pizza. Uh, but these two are actually going to be much easier to take care of than these two. Um, however, if we were to determine which of these two ought to happen first, theoretically, if the array is empty, that precludes if the array contains no elements that are equal to 10. So, the next one we would probably check if we want to do these nice and conscientiously is we're going to make sure that uh, if the array is empty, it should turn an empty array. Now, <clears throat> if there's no property at the key, we've gone over objects enough for this to be not perfectly straightforward, but the idea behind this is that if we access the object, input object, at the input key, and we get undefined, that's the same as hey, that property doesn't exist. So it doesn't matter if it's not an array at that point, it doesn't matter if the array is empty, all of those things don't matter because there isn't actually a valid key for whatever we tried to access it at. So if this is the case, we're gonna return an empty array. If the property at the given key is not an array. Now, we know that we can tell whether something is an array or not by accessing the value. Object at key is going to give us the array value, theoretically. And for us to ensure that that's the case, we're gonna say array dot is array. We're going to call that on object at key, and we're going to check to see if that's equal to false. If it's equal to false, then we know that the object, object's value at the input key is not an array. And according to the pseudocode that we have on lines 8 and 9, that's when we're going to return an empty array. If the array is empty, and uh, it's possible that there's a better way to do this, but a relatively simple way is to say object at key dot length is equal to zero. Once we've gotten to line 16, meaning we've gotten past all of this code, we know that the object has a valid key at whatever we're asking about. We know that that key is an array because object dot is array called on the uh, value that we're looking at was not equal to false. If it was equal to false, we would have ended the function right here. Since we've gotten to this point, we can assume that object at key is an array. And so if we check the length, and it's zero, that means it's an empty array and we can just return an empty array. 
Now we want to talk about how to actually do the problem. What we've just done are the edge cases, meaning that if we see this problem and any of these are true, we don't really need to do anything about looking at the elements in the array or checking if they're equal to 10. But now that we've gotten to line 20, we assume a couple of things. One, the object has a key, the key is an array, and the array is not empty. So first thing we're going to want to do is iterate over the array inside of the object. If we know that there's an array there and we know it's not empty, we want to look at all of the values. As we're looking at all the values, we want to check if current value is equal to 10. Now we're missing one step, which would be we need a result array. One of the things that this mentions up here is that uh, we are going to return an array containing all the elements of the array located at the given key that are equal to 10. Of course, we could splice as we go, although you might find out if you've tried to use splice inside of a for loop that it's not exactly a walk in the park. Um, it's not impossible, but it's certainly not as easy as just using splice and continue going. So what I would suggest we do is we're going to create a new array, iterate over these elements, and anytime we see one that's equal to 10, we push that element to the new array and then return it at the end. So let's get to it. We'll need a result array, so we'll say create a result array, iterate over the array inside of the object. If the current value is equal to 10, push to result array. Theoretically at this point, uh, we assume that we have ended the iteration because this part of the pseudocode is lined up with where the iteration begins. In which case, the array, our result array, has been filled with the values that equal 10 and will return the result array. So I'm going to splice in the code, which is to say I'm going to put one line of pseudocode next to each line. So the result is equal to an array. Iterate over the array inside of the object. The only part of this that's going to be different is rather than something like array.length, we say object at key. Object at key will access the theoretical array that'll be um, supplied to the problem. And object at key.length, and then i. I'll wrap the curly brace around there. Uh, if the current value is equal to 10, so current value is going to be the array, which is object at key at the current index that we're iterating over, and we want to check to see if that's equal to 10. And if it is, we're going to push the current value, which is again this expression right here, we're going to push that to the result. Result.push object at key at i. Finally, once that's all happened, we know that the result array contains the values that equal, to, equal 10 from the original object. So let's go over it again. The first thing we need to check is that if there's no property at the key, it should return an empty array. So if object at key is equal to undefined, we know that there's no property inside of this object at the inputted key. So we return an empty array. Next, we're going to check to see if the value for the object at the inputted key is an array. If it's not an array, which is what we're checking here, we want to return an empty array. And lastly, we're going to check to see what we now know is an array has a length of zero. If it does have a length of zero, the array is empty, and the edge case suggests that we should just return an empty array there. Now, the one edge case that we didn't go over was if the array contains no elements that are equal to 10, I would proffer that what's going to happen is that nothing is going to happen here. If none of the values inside of there uh, are equal to 10, then the result array is going to remain empty, so we'll return an empty array in that case anyway. In the case where it is it has values equal to 10, this if statement's going to fire, and it will say, hey, if the current value is equal to 10, push it to the result, and then finally we return the result. And we're in good shape. Now, since this is a becoming a rather long video, uh, I'm going to copy and paste these to the next problem, because almost every problem that you're going to do with get elements or anything that equal 10 at property are going to involve these three edge cases. For practice purposes, I would absolutely recommend that you write these out every time and kind of remind yourself about what you're doing each time. These sort of like edge case, call it like mental logical manipulations, is a very, very good way to make sure that you're approaching problems in an ordered fashion. Meaning, what's the first thing I do? I check to see if there are any edge cases defining the problem, specify them up front, then get into the coding. Um, so let's scroll down. I'm going to paste this in here because it's almost identically the same problem. Uh, in this case, all we're going to do is we need to check rather than if the elements are equal to 10, we're going to check to see that it's uh, less than 100. So we're going to do a very, very similar setup. First thing we're going to do is say variable result is equal to an empty array. 
we're going to return the result at the end, provided that our cursor is working. Return the result. And we're going to make a for loop. And the for loop is going to iterate over the object at key dot length. This is how we access the array. And we know it's an array because of our edge cases. Um, and then we check the length, and that allows us to create a for loop over it. Next, we're going to want an if statement. It's going to check to see if the current value inside of the array. So this accesses the object's value, which is itself an array. At i, we'll then access an individual element of that array. And we want to make sure that any that are less than 100 are getting pushed to our result. And again, object at key, this expression gives us the array. At i is going to access an individual element within that array. And we're already returning result. Let's clean up a couple of these extra lines. So we've got our edge cases. Create a result array. Iterate over the array nested inside of the object. Check to see if the current value is less than 100. If it is, push it into the result array and then return the result. Excellent work on that one. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.